Hi guys, uh, today we are doing my first ever Q&A on YouTube. So uh, I posted on my Instagram, uh, I wrote the questions down that I got asked and I'm going to answer them. So, one question is, I love your job, how did you get inspired? Well, with my music, I never really think about it as a job. It's just kind of, without sounding cliche, like who I am. You know, like I really found my identity in it when I was... 11 and um, I just I remember being like it's my first year of senior school I was in year 7 and I had this idea because I used to watch like loads of teen movies when I was like um, 10, 11 to, um, it would be cool to start a band when I get to high school uh, I completely forgot about the idea when I started high school and um, I watched Back to the Future and I saw Marty McFly on his skateboard with his guitar like before he went to school and I was like, oh yeah, I want to do that. And when I started doing music, something just hit me. And I felt something really deep. I felt like a calling that I'd never felt in my life. Um, and I got so into bands. And before I'd hear music and I would feel all these things. And I remember writing a couple of times. Uh, um, I went to this class thing on Sunday once, just this like kids workshop thing. And I started writing a song and I was figuring out all these things. And there were little signs like that and the way like, music elevated me and I could really connect myself through it when I was a kid um, but I never really, it's like movies, it, I never really realised how much I deeply loved it because everyone loves music if you know what I mean so um, yeah so I, I kind of guess I just found myself in it and you know I always try and keep up good inspiration like or I'm a very self-aware person, I always like to um, analyse myself, look at myself through music um, and I think like one good thing is, because like, my headphones have been broken for about a year and because of my, one of my headphones, my phone, because it's shit um, and I haven't been able to like listen to music when I go for walks all the time and I've noticed how that affected me but you know, I think if something's truly there, you can always find a source of inspiration you just have to dig for it, you know and, that's my advice and yeah it's not my job uh, I have to be a waiter at the moment so uh, but yeah it's never it's never gonna be my job it's just gonna be a part of me and that's how I get inspired another question I got asked is what is my favorite dessert my favorite dessert is treacle tart it's nothing better than that I love the taste of you know have you ever seen that tinned like green syrup I forgot what it's called but it's amazing um, if you make like a nice pastry put cornflakes on that and then you uh, put that syrup over it, you put it in the oven, it's the best thing I've ever tasted in my life, it's been my favourite dessert forever. I also like fudge cake, um, coffee cake, you know any sort of cake really, it's my favourite dessert. Opinions on people who eat pineapple on pizza, my opinion on that is you're a fucking psychopath. I think that there will be something wrong with your brain and it's like signals to your taste buds to think that that goes. Like you're like similar to people that wear hats when they go to sleep. You need to be sectioned. Any favourite artists? Yes, of course. I love so many artists. I've loved hundreds of artists over the years. Um, so if I miss one or two, um, this is not a, a straight reflection on every artist I like. But um, the ones that come to my head straight away is Blade, Young Lean, Mineral, XXX Tentacion, um, Jeff Buckley, Nirvana, um, loads of melodic hardcore bands like The Elijah, P Early Pianos Become the Teeth, I mean, I like Devil's Sword of Soul, um, Bring Me the Horizon, they were the first band I ever saw when I was 13 in the Deathcore days, and I kind of grew up with them, so they're a close band to me. Um, they're some of the favourites that come to my mind. Do I have a favourite colour? Yes, it's yellow. What am I most passionate about? For me, um, it's really important to live by your soul and feel your true potential. So for me, that is my passion, to know who I am, to give off every aspect of myself in everything I do, um, to stay true to that, and that's my passion. Um, that's a whole equation I could talk about, but simply that's my passion to be true to myself, to know who I am, to live my full potential, to uh, you know just be connected to myself and do what I'm here to do. And I know I have a purpose, and it's my life to do that. 
Does my throat hurt after a recording? Yes, depending on the recording. Uh, I assume you're referring to screaming. Um, and yes, definitely, I need to be very careful with this. Some screamers are very, you know, professionally trained, you know, people like the guy from Lamb of God, Sam Carter from Architects, they've been screaming like mad for years and they're still doing it, so you can obviously do things with your voice to protect it. However, um, when you look at those screams that we did over 10 years, in interviews, you can just see that their voice is fucked. Um, and uh, there's no way around hurting your voice screaming, really. I think there's just more how much you can do to not hurt it, if that makes sense. And the sort of vocals I do, they're not technical screaming vocals, it's more emotional hardcore I like, which is more of a natural feeling, a natural yell. Um, so it's very, um, it's a lot harder I think to protect your voice, but you know, I always do warm ups. I always try and scream in moderation because I haven't been like doing any shows or anything recently. So I always scream in moderation, always do warm ups, give myself enough uh, sleep and rest time to heal. Um, so yeah, and even if you sing, like a lot of the vocals I do are just belting, you know, so it's always good to warm up. So yeah, my voice hurts uh, when I scream. And you know, I think if you're interested in like finding out how to, you can protect it, you know, just do a few common sense things that help, uh, learn some warm ups. Try and scream in moderation, like in my first band when I was 17, 18, first proper band. Um, I, I was when I first started screaming and there was a, the first couple of months, like my voice was fine. And then after about two months, I had a period where it was fucked for like three months. And then after that three months happened, it came back and it came back a lot stronger. I remember like we do band practice once a week and my voice would be fucked after doing it. And then if I had a sh like two, we had like two shows in a row, I wouldn't be able to like give the best performance for like the second show or even the first show if I've been doing band practice. But then like when it came to like the summer, like five months later after doing it, I could do like two, three shows in a row and still be all right. So um, it's, a bit, it's a lot like a muscle and it is a muscle. Um, so I'd build it up in moderation, in a sensible way, and then, you know, if you take all these, like, precautions with your health and your voice, then you can probably do a lot to look after your voice. Would I rather have infinite money or live forever? Um, neither. One, because we already live forever, our soul's eternal. Um, and two, if I had infinite money, I would actually be really depressed because it would make me feel like I couldn't do anything I want to do with my life because I could just buy it and that would suck. How old are you? I am 27, uh, 28 in just over a month. Um, and one thing I want to say about age is when I was got to 23, I realized the passions I have and what I've been given are never gonna die. I look at actors that inspired me like Viggo Mortensen, David Fuis, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, they all have the same fire, they're all artists and you know that never dies. Look at Machine Gun Kelly, he's in, he's in his early 30s, he's in the prime of his career as well. And I think if you look after yourself, uh, you know, your body will be in a good state for a long time. Western values make you feel like early 20s is when your body is at its prime, but you know, um, you're, you start shrinking at 40, right? So. You know, if you look at loads of people in their thirties, their late twenties, even later than forty, you know, you can look great at any age, you can, and you can take care of yourself. So this this idea about how you have to be um, under twenty five to make it in any creative field is just bullshit. Because if you look around you, you can see that's just not true. Um, and real artistry, real passion, never dies. So uh, when I realised that at twenty three, it was just such a uplifting feelings when I was 18 I was like this is the prime money to make it now and then um, at 23 I was like wow I've got so much time to do everything I want to do with my life and it's great so I'm so happy with my age um, you know I'm very young but I also have wisdom it's what someone told me once that I had a chat with and that's very true you know when you get to 27 you're still young but you have a lot of experience and it's very helpful did I take any singing classes yes um, singing is something I've struggled with my whole life. Uh, screaming, I can do. Um, 
but singing has been quite hard for me. I don't know what it is. Uh, when I sing, I get a strangling feeling and it can really limit my voice. Uh, but I always felt like I had it in me to be able to sing the songs that I wrote. I don't class myself as a singer. When I tell people I'm a musician, they're like, oh, you're a singer. I'm not a singer, I'm a writer. I had 10 lessons. I wrote a song called Madonna. Um, the vocals in that I'm very proud. I practiced that every day for maybe even a year before I recorded it. Uh, well, not every day, but you know, five times a week. And uh, when I was younger, I had a lot of people laugh at me for my vocals. I remember doing open mic nights, and uh, when I was like 17, it would be like people's first time going to the open mic nights, and then they would see me perform, and uh, and then when they saw me sing, they'd be like, "I'll go after him." because they felt confident to go after me and then someone who was like you know a picturesque singer they would never want to go after so you know that says um, you know how people perceive my singing at points but um, around that time I also wrote another song called They Will Never See when I was 17 and I practiced that song so hard and I remember doing a gig where um, a few people in the crowd were laughing at me when I was doing these open mics and it was it really bothered me like I f sort of fell out of myself over it because I kept practicing and didn't see results but you know I never want to give up and when I practiced that when I played that song that I I practiced so much I silenced the crowd and everyone was like whoa and that feeling was one of the best feelings I've ever had in my life so you know I've always known that I can um, I can get where I want and there is an ambulance coming I don't know if you can hear it and yeah, I'm going to have these singing issues all my life, but I've developed a technique and I realised one, one thing that really inspired me is, so I had a bit of a mental breakdown from like 18 to late 22, and when I got back, at, back into the world at 22, um, I started writing my songs, well, I'd, I'd been writing songs, and I was having the same problem with singing, um, and... It, it, was a it was a really hard thing, but then what I did was uh, I, I got 10 singing lessons and the guy told me, the teacher, I had one teacher actually that was the most awkward, excruciating experience I ever had because she didn't want to listen to me, I found her exercises hard, um, and we just didn't gel together and it was a really embarrassing experience. Um, but I had this uh, teacher in a place called Lane Buzzard and I really got on with him and he said like if anyone tells you you can't sing that's, that's bullshit on your first day like you done scales with me you could hit a high C um, he just says how I sung was not necessarily the correct way because a lot of people they try and make sounds with the throat and that's why the throat strangles and I still do this now but he showed me how to sing from the belly to like Put your chest out and try and hold as much oxygen as you can here while you're pushing through your belly and then with that when it gets to the throat I try and control it but not in a strangling way just to hit the notes and trying to hit the, like the back of the throat the roof of the mouth and I get a nice feeling and um, what I was going to say was when I got to 23 um, I had a, had a band called Mineral and they are one of the best inspirations most beautiful things that ever happened to my life and these vocals like people said the guy sounds a bit like me um, they were like tiny bit out at times but some were so much passion and sometimes so powerful it sounded so good and I was like so inspired because in this underground emo scene from the 90s like there were loads of people that um, had this kind of like really melodic whiny, very powerful, sometimes very in tune, sometimes a little bit out, but generally speaking a nice vocal line to follow and I just, the way this person wrote their songs, how they sung was very similar to me and I really connected with it and um, I could really pull off this style and Madonna's like that, uh, the singing in the tree of life's like that in the music box lullaby and I really found I really found a craft that um, I could sing and so ever since then I have a style, I have a sound that I'm influenced by, like I take other inspirations into my singing but that really showed me that I can pull it off. I'm never ever going to be an X Factor sort of singer, I never want to be, I'm never going to be Adele, I'm never going to be The Weeknd and I don't want to be. I love the sound of my voice, 
and it sounds good for what it is. Um, so I'm not the sort of guy that's gonna be at, with an acoustic guitar covering Umbrella by Rihanna and singing it amazingly. Uh, but w if I have a band, if I have that sort of like mineral influence sound, um, just a bit of an alt singing sound, it suits my voice perfectly. And so I'm very confident in my singing, but I have to, I have to do it in the right aspect and I have to present it in the right way.